On July 22, a paper about the first room temperature, ambient pressure superconductor, LK99, was uploaded on the research sharing platform archive. Worldwide attempts to validate this have been made and many issues have arisen. However, we would like to go back to the basics and talk about the claims made in the manuscript posted on archive. According to the manuscript, LK99, a material claimed to exhibit superconductivity at room temperature and pressure, is not so much difficult to synthesize compared to the typical superconductors. Then, why can't we still determine whether this material is a superconductor or not? To answer this question, we first need to understand the properties of superconductors. Generally, superconductors show three characteristics, Meissner effect, near-zero electrical resistance, and magnetic levitation through flux pinning. Let's take a look at the results that LK99 has shown about these superconductivity properties and what the current issues are. Before explaining superconductors, let's look at the types of magnetic materials. Magnetic materials are largely classified into ferromagnetism, paramagnetism, and diamagnetism based on the degree of magnetization. For ferromagnetic and paramagnetic materials, when subjected to an externally applied magnetic field, these materials are magnetized in the same direction, maintaining or strengthening the final magnetic flux density inside the material. However, in the case of diamagnetic material, when an external magnetic field is applied, the material is magnetized in the opposite direction, exhibiting magnetic properties that oppose the external magnetic field. Among the diamagnetic materials, Especially, superconductors show perfect diamagnetism which is also called the Meissner effect. They are magnetized in a way to perfectly oppose the external magnetic field. That is, the magnitude of the magnetization is exactly the same as the magnetic field trying to penetrate the material while the direction of the magnetization is the opposite. Eventually, no magnetic field exists inside the material. The direction and intensity of this material magnetization can be distinguished through a physical quantity describing the magnetization rate, the magnetic susceptibility. The magnetic field generated inside the material can be represented by the following equation considering the magnetic field characteristics of the material. Thus, if the magnetic susceptibility is greater than or equal to zero like ferromagnetism and paramagnetism, it maintains or strengthens the external magnetic field. If it becomes negative like diamagnetism, the external magnetic field weakens as it enters the material. And when it comes to perfect diamagnetism, it has a feature of completely repelling the magnetic field trying to enter the material with a magnetization rate of negative 1. Superconductors exhibit superconductivity below a certain temperature which is called the critical temperature. Superconductors show perfect diamagnetism below the critical temperature, have a magnetic susceptibility of negative 1, so there is no magnetic field inside. However, as the temperature rises and approaches the critical current, the superconductor undergoes a sudden transition. If the temperature grows further above the critical temperature, it loses the perfect diamagnetic property and has a magnetization rate close to zero. Therefore, superconductors have a feature of sharply transitioning to a level very close to zero near the critical temperature. Now let's look at the magnetic susceptibility of LK99. The graph on the left is a magnetization measurement graph of YBCO, which is a confirmed high temperature superconductor. The critical temperature of YBCO is about 92 Kelvin, and you can see a clear transition from zero or a slight positive to negative at the critical temperature on the left graph. In contrast, LK99 on the right already has a negative magnetic susceptibility around the claimed critical temperature of 127 degrees Celsius in the paper and is decreasing, clearly not showing a clear transition that a superconductor should have. This is generally the characteristics of a typical diamagnetic material. 
The current in a conductor flows due to the potential difference appearing between two points in the conductor according to Ohm's law. Electrical resistance is a characteristic that interferes the flow of such current and is caused by collisions between electrons and atoms in the conductor, such as copper, a normal conductor. Therefore, the resistance of a normal conductor is always greater than zero and satisfies Ohm's law. Superconductors, due to their unique characteristics, have an electrical resistance close to zero under conditions below the critical temperature and magnetic field, and almost no voltage appears even though the current flows. As shown in the picture on the left, superconductors, where superconductivity has been previously confirmed, show a characteristic close to zero electrical resistance below the critical temperature. However, LK99 not only shows a much higher resistance than zero below the critical temperature, but it also appears to demonstrate the characteristic of decreasing resistance as the temperature decreases as the evident slope shows, which is a behavior commonly found in normal conductors. Thus, it seems difficult to claim that LK99 is a superconductor with near zero electrical resistance based on the resistance data presented in the archive paper. For more explicit proof, verification through repeated experiments and rigorous data analysis seems necessary. The magnetic levitation characteristic of LK99 might be a phenomenon caused by simple diamagnetism. We would like to compare the magnetic levitation images of thermally decomposed graphite, which exhibits diamagnetism, with LK99. The levitated object does not fix in one position and tends to shake if it's a phenomenon caused by simple diamagnetism and not superconductivity. Superconductors fix in one position by the magnetic field passing through them due to the flux pinning phenomenon. Superconductors show a phenomenon where they do not move and are fixed to the external magnetic flux lines, as seen in the video on the left. However, the LK99 video uploaded to the archive shows a somewhat ambiguous phenomenon. The material is not fixed when an external magnetic field is applied but rotates and sticks to the permanent magnet on the bottom. This is a rare phenomenon in superconductors. Particularly, in a situation where there seems no particular change in the experimental environment, the collapse of flux pinning and sticking to a permanent magnet is not typical in ordinary superconductors. Of course, it could also be an issue caused by the purity of the material, so it seems that more measurements and verification based on data will be needed in the future. Since the announcement of the LK99 material, numerous institutions have attempted theoretical or experimental verification. Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory has mentioned the possibility of LK99 being a superconductor through simulation results. Some research institutes have tried experimental verification such as magnetic levitation and current conduction by creating samples of LK99. And the Korean Society of Superconductivity and Cryogenics has even established a committee to verify room temperature superconductivity through the confirmation of superconductivity in the sample. However, as of the current results, none of the three main characteristics proving superconductivity have been proven. Cross verification from various institutions is still needed to get a definitive answer on whether LK99 is a superconductor. In low temperature superconductor, metal to superconductor transition occurs. This was explained by the BCS theory of superconductivity. The discovery of high temperature superconductor confirmed the possibility of transition to a superconducting state from non-metals. This is outside the scope of BCS theory and is not yet fully explained. Then what about LK99? As claimed in the paper, it could actually be a room temperature superconductor, or it might not be a superconductor at all, or it could be an entirely new material. However, based on the content of the papers released so far, it is highly likely that LK99 is not a superconductor. The emergence of Meissner effect by non-metal to superconducting state transition at the critical temperature, zero electrical resistance, and complete superconducting magnetic levitation due to flux pinning, 
these three factors that should generally be satisfied if it is a superconductor have not been confirmed. While magnetic levitation is indeed a representative phenomenon observable in superconductors, the presence or absence of magnetic levitation does not determine the existence of the superconducting phenomenon. And most importantly, simply reproducing the LK99 paper and video does not fully prove room temperature superconductivity. This is because, as explained so far, if the contents announced in the paper and video are proven accurate, there may instead be a possibility of disproving LK99 is a superconductor. To prove superconductivity, characteristics that appear in general superconductors must be confirmed. In order to confirm this, much time and data are needed for comprehensive verification. However, it seems that this will lead to various follow-up studies, and we hope that the field of superconductivity, like LK99, will be enriched with research related to room temperature superconductivity.